Hello, I'm Tomoharu Gawa of the University of Tokyo. I will be talking about work done with Stefan Ma and Richard Jones of the University of Kent. In this talk, I will propose the design and implementation of hidden classes for JavaScript virtual machine for memory constrained systems. Examples of our target systems are IoT devices like these pictures. The left one is STM32, STM and the right one is Freedom Microcontroller. Both have a SRAM of, of a few hundred kilobytes. We are developing a JavaScript virtual machine for these devices. JavaScript is a dynamic language where we can add properties to objects after they are created. Hidden classes are well-known optimization techniques to cope with this dynamic behavior. This technique can reduce VM footprint if many objects with the same type are created, and it also allows inline caching which is another well-known optimization technique to improve performance. However, there is, room, there is some room to improve hidden classes. First, even with hidden classes, the allocations of property value storage are still necessary. Second, hidden classes consume space, which is serious in space-constrained systems. So, we propose the design of efficient hidden classes for memory constrained systems. The new design reduces both the allocations of property, va property value storage and space consumption due to hidden classes. This work is designed for our developing JavaScript virtual machine, EJSVM. EJSVM is a JavaScript virtual machine for IoT. It supports a subset of ECMAScript. Especially, it only supports adding normal properties. EJSVM is a pure bytecode interpreter. It does not have a JIT compiler. It uses max safe garbage collection, but recently, compaction is being implemented. In the evaluation of this talk, we used compaction for all all GC cycles. Now I explain the standard hidden class before going on to our design. Hidden class is let you map from the property name to the location of the value. For example, these P0, P1, and P2 are objects that have, the, uh, that have this hidden class. This hidden class describes that the location uh, of the property x is at index 0. So the value of the, pro of the property x of, of object p0 is 3. Hidden classes are similar to class objects of statically typed languages, but they are created dynamically. In this example, an object p0 is first created with an empty hidden class on the left of the diagram. The hidden class evolves adding property name index mapping as property are added to P0. It ends up with the hidden class on the, on the right. Further objects P1 and P2 allocated at this allocation site share the same hidden class. The property values are stored in the separate property array so that the arrays can be extended when the further property is added. In the rest of this talk, I will use this abbreviation, these abbreviations for hidden classes. Hidden classes form a state transition diagram called the hidden class tree, which allows sharing. Objects are born in the root state of the tree, 
And when the properties added, an object follows a transition edge to find the, ne find the next state. In EJS William, different allocation sites share the same tree if the constructor functions are the same. For example, in this program, P and Q share the same tree. One problem with this standard design is that even with hidden classes, the property array is reallocated to extend when the property is added. This involves memory allocation and copying content. We could over-allocate slots for property arrays to mitigate this problem, but this may waste space. Another problem is memory pressure due to hidden classes. Hidden classes stay in memory for future use. We found that these hidden classes consume the substantial part of the heap. For example, after VM initialization, we found that 12 kilobytes was used for hidden classes. And for the collision detector benchmark, about about 50 kilobytes was used for hidden classes. However, we found that most hidden classes are not the final class of any object. For example, let's consider this program. Object P gets properties X and Y, and then under some condition, it gets U and V. In this code fragment is executed repeatedly, objects can eventually get only xy class for this xy uv class. These x and xy u classes are abandoned. In this, in this talk, I will call these classes intermediate classes and draw with blue. Based on this observation, we propose two optimizations. One is allocation site plate transitioning to mitigate reallocation of property arrays. With this optimization, each allocation site runs the hidden class tree and skips over intermediate classes when it allocates an object. In this example, uh, this class is skipped and the object is allocated with this hidden class. The object is given sufficient memory to hold properties in the object. So this object is given two slots to hold property X and Y. These slots are initialized with a special value empty. When a further property is added, an external array is allocated, and the last slot in the object is converted to hold the external array. This design has the problem. Objects with the same same set of properties may have different memory layout. For example, this object is created with this hidden class, and later, property X and Y are added. So it has one in object slot. These objects are created after the allocation site runs this hidden class tree. So these objects have two in object slots. In this situation, versions of hidden classes, this one and this one, with the same mapping are created. This involves duplication of mapping information, and multiple versions may confuse inline caches. If an inline cache caches this graph, then the cache uh, the, the inline cache cannot access 
Oke, okay. oh percaya tuh. To solve this problem, we split the hidden graph into two parts: property map and format. This is property map and these are format. Property map describes the mapping from name to index, but the index is not the offset. The actual location is computed in this function from the index and the number of in-object slots which is held in the format. Inline caching caches this property map. The initial class is decided for each allocation site. For example, initial class for this red allocation site is this XY class, and the initial, uh, initial class for this blue allocation site is this XYZ. Another optimization is the hidden class tree reduction. This reduces space consumption due to hidden classes. It may also mitigate the location of property areas. For example, let's consider this hidden class hidden, this hidden class tree. Hidden class tree reduction bypasses these intermediate classes and unlink them from the tree. The unlinked uh, these unlinked classes will be reclaimed if all objects using these classes die or abandon them. Hidden class tree direction preserves branching classes, even if they are intermediate. This is because we cannot decide the transition to follow if such classes are removed. So how can we find intermediate classes? We keep, we keep track of the number of objects entering and leaving each state of a hidden class tree. More precisely, we increment the entered counter in the entering class and the left counter in the, le in the leaving class. At garbage collection, we decide if a class is intermediate or not based on the entered and left counters. If most objects entering the class have left, we regard it as intermediate. More concretely, if L over E plus L exceed a threshold, then we regard the class as intermediate. For example, these red numbers, uh, if these red numbers are uh, entered and left counters, we can see classes XY and XYUV are likely to be, fi to be final classes of some objects and we can regard other classes as intermediate. This one and this one can be intermediate. The entered and left counters are maintained separately for each allocation site to allow different initial classes for each allocation site. We implemented these optimizations and evaluated their performance. We use the benchmark suit from a dynamic language symposium paper, Are We Fast Yet? Although these are not IoT-oriented benchmarks, most programs require 10 kilobytes to 1 megabyte heap, which is our target. First, we measured how much reallocation was reduced. This red part of this chart shows the total reallocation of external property arrays. It was reduced by avoiding reallocation. Note that this orange part, objects excluding external property arrays increased, increased because property values in external arrays migrated to in-object slots. As a result, Execution time improved for most programs. This chart shows 
execution times normalized to baseline. The smaller, the better. The orange bars are for the optimized VM. This chart shows execution time for most programs are improved. Next, this chart shows how memory usage due to slim classes is reduced. For example, after VM initialization, only 3 kilobytes is used for hidden classes. For the execution of the collision detector benchmark, only about 10 kilobytes of the memory is used for hidden classes. This chart shows the minimum heap sizes to execute programs. Again, orange bars are for the optimized VM. They are reduced substantially. Finally, we compared the performance of each VM with another JavaScript VM for IoT, JavaScript, which does not use hidden classes. For minimum heap sizes, JavaScript was better for small scale programs. However, EJS VM can also execute programs with less than 40 kilobytes of heap. For programs that require more than 100 kilobytes of the heap, EJS VM was better. For execution time, EJS VM was better except for Mandelbrot and Permute. These programs do not access normal properties frequently. In conclusion, we propose the design of hidden classes for memory constraint systems. The key observation was that many intermediate hidden classes are not necessary. Based on this observation, we propose two optimization techniques. One is allocation site plane transitioning, which improves execution time. The other is hidden class tree hidden class tree reduction, which reduces space, space usage. Thank you very much.